Welcome to today's T-Splines instructional webinar. I am Matt Cedarberg from T-Splines and I'm here today with our instructor Klaus Kunin. And um, we're excited to have Klaus here to actually um, walk through with everyone how to make a wee nunchuck with T-Splines for Rhino. So this is a, a new type of webinar. We've never tried this before. So I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous that um, that this will work out well. Um, if you haven't downloaded the T-Splines for Rhino file, you can, you can look in the chat section of the, of the GoToWebinar panel and you can download that now. And the idea is that Klaus will go ahead and, and actually model the nunchuck and you can work along with him and, um, and ask questions. So um, we can all have some hands-on experience together. Um, just a little bit about the, the logistics of the webinar. Everyone will be muted um, except for Klaus and me. So the way that you'll ask questions is by typing them into the, the chat section of the GoToWebinar screen. So while Klaus is actually modeling, you can ask questions that way and then um, we'll either type back answers or um, we might pause and, and ask Klaus to um, explain things verbally. So it's not quite the same as having a live class, but hopefully it's just about as good. <laughs> um, let me just give uh, a little bit of a background on T-splines and um, then some background to class, and then we'll go ahead and launch into this. So um, today's webinar really is focused on the on some nuts and bolts about how to use T-splines. And actually, let me, let me start out with a poll, just so we can get an understanding about how all of you will be um, participating in the webinar. Um, let me uh, go ahead and throw this up here. So there's, I, are, we're curious, during this webinar, are you going to just be watching or trying to model along with the instructor? Uh, this will be interesting feedback for us so we know how how to pace uh, Klaus's instruction and how much to wait in, in between each step. So we'll see this pull up here for another couple seconds. And uh, okay, so here's the here's the results of the poll. Looks like an exact 50-50 <laughs> split um, and there are roughly 50 people here. So um, that will be that will be useful as far as the the pacing of the webinar goes. Um, let me just throw one more pull up here before we um, before we go ahead, and that is what is your experience level with T-splines? Have you used it at all before? Have you just played with it a little bit, or have you made at least one model successfully? Uh, this will also be really helpful information as we. Um, figure out what level to uh, level to have the instruction at today. So, leave this up here for just a couple more seconds, and we'll go ahead and close the poll. So, it looks like most of the people here have just played with T spines a little bit. Um, a bunch of people have, have made at least one model successfully. So that's about perfect. Um, that's about what we're targeting at. If, if you've never used it, we should you should still be able to catch up and learn quite a bit today as well. So again, just a brief introduction as to what T-Spines for Rhino was built for. Um, it was built to help you more quickly make organic shapes uh, in a fun way and to give you a, a mathematically robust result. So just talking a little bit about each of those points and some experience that customers have had with T-Splines. Um, one of our designers mentioned that his styling team wanted a design to be, so let me go ahead and hide that, hide that poll. Um, one of the T-Splines the users has gone ahead and, let's see, Klaus, can you see my, my screen or are you seeing the, the overview? Oh, there we go, uh, we'll show my screen. I see the overview. No, okay. I see it. Um, yeah, so again, just a review of, of T-Splines for Rhino is, was built to be fast, fun, and robust. So one user um, said, our styling team wanted the design to be more organic and less mechanical. After an engineer spent four weeks struggling on the model using other software, he was able to get an acceptable model in T-Splines in a couple of days. 
and then iterate on that model in real time, um, making it a little bit softer here, a little more taper, taper there. And that's something that Kloss will do today with the NumCheck, and you'll all be able to do as well on your own computers. Um, as far as making a fun piece of software, um, one of our users mentioned that for me, T-Splines is just a more fun, creative way to work. And one of the one of the things that can potentially um, get in the way of that fun is is uh, still needing to learn the software and learning some of the basic commands. So hopefully today, as you learn those basic commands and we help you get through some of the mind shift changes that come when you learn T-Splines, you'll be able to get to that fun level um, right away. And finally, T-Splines gives very robust models. Um, this is just one example of someone that T-Splines was the first time that they were able to read an IGES file into another program with zero gaps or errors. So the model that you make in T-Splines, you'll be able to pass downstream to SOLIDWORKS, ProE, other programs. It'll be a very, very good quality model. So with that, let me just introduce uh, Klaus Kuhnen. He's a German designer with a background in multimedia product and jewelry design. He is interested in process research and ex in experimenting with new technology. In his workflow, he often evaluates how tools from one discipline can be applied to a different field to provide creative solutions for common design process problems. Um, and he works as a freelancer and a consultant and has also taught 3D fabrication technologies at the university level. And um, Klaus has been a T-Spines user for a while, and he just volunteered to do this webinar for us. So he, uh, um, let me go ahead and turn the time over to Klaus, and I can thank him for his time. Okay. Do you do you guys see and hear me? Does it work? Yeah, you look great. It looks good, Klaus. Okay, shall we start then? Let's go ahead. Well, hello, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to hope that for those who are a little bit familiar with T-splines, this will be quite informative and uh, maybe we'll learn some new tips and tricks. And those who are rather new, maybe I hope you're familiar with Rhino, you will see that working with polygons, which is the main tool in T-splines, is very different approach in how you can model an object compared to traditional NURBS surfacing tools. Klaus, yeah. your audio is kind of coming in and out, if you can speak a little bit more loudly. Okay. Is it, how is the audio right now? That's good. That's good? Okay. Maybe I just have to speak a little bit louder. Okay. Okay. So, um, Everybody has a file there? How's the, how's the audio going on right now? Yeah, the audio is great. Um, okay. and, if, and if you don't have the file yet, then you can, I'll go ahead and uh, we just posted a link to it in the chat window so you can download it there. Okay. Um, the reason why I proposed to to do this demo with the Nunchak from Wii is because it is actually a truly organic object and modeling it with NURBS tools probably will take you a lot more time defining and building the shape than, for example, with the polygon approach T-Splines offers you through Rhino. Also, for those who are rather new to T-Splines, mm -hmm. I will mainly use all the commands uh, through the menu and click on those, so you see all the time what I'm doing. I'm not using the um, uh, hotkeys. So, you see I have my left and my front view, the two images, the profiles, and Oh, hold on. I have this. My Windows bar doesn't go away, so I have to resize my window a little bit. I can turn snap on. Because this is half of an object, it really makes sense that you work with the snap tool turned on. It's later for mirroring your object. And we start with the append face tool, which is basically 
um, the first step to draw a polygon. For example, here I start sketching out a very rough rectangular shape. Three clicks for all additional faces. Each time I right click to finish it. And then we have just like a, a normal rectangular box shape. And the second step, now we can actually start adjusting that mesh a little bit so it fits the outer profile of my background. So I can go to mode. If you click here, you can switch between the different elements of the geometry. For example, vertices or edges, faces or an object. In this mode, I will work with the vertices. And then I start roughly adjusting the position of the control points. So I start to follow the curvature a little bit. Let me just break in, Klaus. So those of you who are following along in modeling, um, the only command he's used so far is the the T is append command. Can you mouse over that again, Klaus? Yep, and, I am there. And just made, what is it, about five five faces just appended next to each other and then using the manipulator to move those into position. And the amount of, of faces I drew is basically some, like a guess. There's no hard rule to it. Sometimes when you um, start working with it, you make a model and then you realize you might have to add more faces or remove faces. So then we should have something like this. And in the next step, we could switch to the edge selection mode and select all those older edges. And in particular for those which are new to T-splines and are familiar with Rhino NURBS, you have to completely change your your understanding of the flexibility, NURBS is basically only one rectangular patch which you could bend, twist, form into a cylinder or sphere, you could project a circle on, trim out a hole, but it's always this rectangular structure. But with T-splines, with the polygon modeling, you're very flexible. It's more like weaving with mesh. So by having only the outer edge selected, I could those edges now extrude to add further geometry and the extrude command is where my mouse is right now. And then I click on it. In this case then I click on the front text. Don't click just into the viewport, click on front. Then it switches to this view and then the edge is still selected which I extruded and I can slightly move it a little bit to the left. And there you see I have the side slightly extruded. And quite often I switch also between polygon or uh, flat and smooth view of my geometry. And when you have this step done right now. We could, for example, go into the front view, go into vertice mode, and then maybe select the top four points. And I try to line them up with the red line. I might have to switch also to rotate and then go back to translate. It will be a little bit of push and pull and moving around the points 
until it matches. But again, because this is not like NURBS, a combination of joint surfaces, we're working with just one solid surface. It doesn't matter that we move around the points because we cannot break apart any edges. So just to break in, the only the only commands that um, Koss has done so far is just the a pinned face, and then he extruded um, part of the model, and then just has been moving control points to match the shape of that reference image. Yeah. And the the structure of the nunchuck, the top part is slightly arced. So, for example, in the right view, I could click one point and then click on front view and, for example, adjust this point. Maybe here I moved us in a little bit. And with this type of modeling, similar like with NERPS, you also want to keep your mesh structure or your topology um, clean, which means those points seen from the side, they're like in line those three not really, so the center point, I just move up a little bit. Maybe here, a little bit there. Okay. How does it look? And we can turn on the smooth gear again. Okay. And you will notice also when you switch between flat and shaded, sometimes the um, profiles like here that don't necessarily match up perfectly. So there's always a little bit of readjusting after you position your points. Yeah, not the strategy of, of starting out by walking by working in the the box mode and then switching over to the smooth mode to get a little bit better fit is something that I like to do as well. And yeah, Klaus is hovering over the smooth toggle icon, and that's the command you click on to go back and forth between the box mode and the smooth mode. So then, when we reach the step, for example, we can start working on building the geometry which is left of the magenta line. And for that, then again, we could go ahead and simply select the edges. Like this. And then here in front view, I click Extrude and position my points again a little bit. So here I have to do a little bit of cleanup again, trying to, to make the topology as even as possible. And so, Klaus, why why are you working mainly in wireframe instead of shaded mode? Is that something that you usually do? Um, well, right now, it depends. I switch forward and backwards. I, I guess personal preference, to be honest. But with wireframe, 
right now the object is rather simple, so I can easily see through and just understand how the geometry flows. If, for example, the the match is more dense, then um, just only working with the wireframe mode might not necessarily be the easiest approach. And again, I just extrude, and then here I have to again readjust some of those points. Just move them to here. So, Klaus, here's a question that came in. How do you move control points? And that might be worth just kind of showing again how you uh, how you pop up the oh, T-Spines heads-up display. Yeah. T-Spines has a very nice widget. And basically, what mode says here, you can show the translator. And it gives you a small heads-up display where on the manipulator, if you click on here, you can switch between the different modes, translate, rotate, or scale. You could also press W, E, or R. And then you have the mode for what you want to select. For example, vertices, edges. Um, for example, here I know I'm in phase selection. With having the f and then the the object selection. So you're not using the Rhino move tools here. Okay. So, Klaus, just a clarification. When you model in T-spines, you usually uh, abandon Rhino commands? Most of the time, yes. Well, I mean, you have everything inside the T-spline command line and the toolbox for you moving um, and rotating and scaling with the translate manipulator plus the selection mode and then all the other modeling tools are all accessible through the T-spline tools. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll just add in, when you are modeling in T-spines, then while your model is a T-spine, you do mainly use the T-spines command. There's a, there's a number of, um, there's a number of Rhino commands that are actually very useful with T-spines, like the Rhino set point command, a lot yeah. of the Rhino UDT commands like bend or flow. Um, if you go to our T-spines, um, manual, maybe, Klaus, could you click on the T-Spines menu? It will be on your computer. It's a small screen right now. So if you can just scroll down to the bottom of that drop-down so that it uh, pulls up um, help. You just can mouse over the help. If you click on the user manual, that will take you to our website where um, you can download the user manual. And there we have a list of all the random commands that are useful with T-Spines. And, um, and that, that can also give you some additional help as far as which random commands might be of use as well. Yeah. Well, I try to keep the selection of tools I use right now to a minimum so those who are not that familiar with T-splines can easily follow. But, for example, the tool um, Matt just mentioned, the set points, that one of the next um, 
features of Rhino I'm going to use because right now this object here is actually open and I would like to close it. This is also going to be a good example for the freedom and flexibility you have with coding and modeling compared to your nerves again. So with this one edge selected in right view and I'll still have my grid snap turned on. I click on extrude and for example move those spaces to the side. And you see that those points or those edges are not lining up along the z-axis. So to line them up I'm going to use set points and align to the walls using the y-axis. And now you see where my I uh, just click here so it's easier to see for you. You see they're all now lined up and if you use the set points command you also can snap for example to the grid or you can also snap to pre-existing T-spline geometry so I'm going to turn on my on snap have points selected and go back to points and then you see I can snap also to T-spline points and click and now you see that they all nicely line up. So right now we have this gap here and there is a hole here and T-spline also has a bridge command which means that between two edges you can fill in a face. And where my mouse is right now, that is the bridge command. If you click it, the command line asks you to select the two edges. Right click and right click. And there you see now it filled in the missing face. And I do the same down here as well. So just selecting opposite faces, you don't need to select the connecting face on the left. Just patch it in automatically. And then maybe turning on smoothing, try to see how it looks. So far so good. For example, the upper corner here on the Wii would actually have a, um, a slightly sharper corner or edge. For that I go back to the raw polygon view and between those two lines I would like to add another yeah loop cut. To do that you can double click on an edge and then it's going to select the complete edge loop as you can see. And where my mouse is right now there is the icon for the insert edge. And when you click on it, see I can now hover over, I actually have to turn off the snap. I can go to one of those edges where my mouse is and you see the black line adjust to where my mouse pointer is. And maybe somewhere here I just click. say there. And then when I go back to smooth view you see that this additional loop cut actually 
sharpens that edge a little bit. And one point just to clarify, it is useful to, to keep on going back to box mode in order to make sure that the topology of your model is good, but this is something you, you can also do this while you're staying in smooth mode so you can see yeah. a little bit easier the um, how that sharpens up when you add that additional edge. But the the way the T-spline responds to that those additional control points is exactly the same as NURBS. So when you're modeling with NURBS, if you have a lot of control points in an area, then the you'll have a tighter curvature. The model will be closer, the surface will be closer to the control points. And the same thing it, it, with T-splines. If you have, if you, even if you look at Klaus's model right now, where there's more ISO curves, then the surface is tighter, and where there's not as many, then it's then it's smoother. Yeah, and that's that's also one of the other concepts you you need to keep in mind with T splines. You don't have fillets; you actually build fillets or rounded corners on the fly, and you define those by how as Matt said, how finely you position, for example, additional loop cuts. Because if I if I would remove those, then that rounding is or the corner is a lot softer again. And We could, for example, at this stage, maybe turn on the symmetry, which yeah. will... Klaus, maybe before you do that, there's yeah. just a question about whether there's a NURBS embedded in this T-spline. Um, one of the, the strengths of T-splines is that whatever you see here in Rhino, um, you can always convert it to NURBS just with a push of a button and the shape won't change. And so if you want to just convert that to NURBS really yeah. quick to see what it looks like, so you just right-click on this icon, and it will convert it to NURBS, and it will split it up, because NURBS have to be rectangular, so it will split it up into a few surfaces. But um, you'll always be able to um, yeah, get an exact NURBS out of this T-spline. So um, you can do that, and it, do that at, at any point of the process. I mean, that's just a terrific part of, of T-splines then. Think about it as a modeling tool in addition to the traditional NURBS patches because after you're done modeling you can convert it to NURBS and then touch up the model where you need to trim parts, cut holes. Can you can you show that NURBS just with the ISO curves? Yeah, and may, so just show the shaded... There you go. Maybe could you explode it just to show how many um, NURBS patches that went into? No problem. So what it does is it will it will split it up wherever there's a star point is where it will be the boundary of a NURB surface. So this it looks like it was four or five uh, NURBS patches just split on those star points. And and there are ways. There's a command uh, to set the surface layout so you can change this slightly as far as how that's broken up. Um, but uh, yep. Um, and Klaus is using, this is version, T-Spline's version 2.3 that Klaus is using. We, there's a question about whether this is the new T-Spline's version 3. Um, this is just the version 2.3. You can, version 3 is in beta, and you can download that, and if you buy T-Spline's today, you'll get that as a free upgrade, but um, this is just version 2. So I'm, so, I'm sorry for the interruption. You go ahead and keep on going, Klaus. Oh, it's, it's fine. So, um, yeah, symmetry. You have in Rhino a mirror tool. Right? What you would use to flip half of the model, and T-spline here has the symmetry. And if you click it, select your object. Now you have to decide um, the um, the axis. So in my case, I have to click on the Y symmetry. I also, by default, would like to have the lattice or the points welded together. 
where the symmetry axis would be. And then you just right click. And in case you get a ghost view like this, that only means that the surface is flipped or the normal to inverted. And here is the command for flip normals. And if you click it, you just have a normal view then again. And the nice part about the symmetry is it just didn't only copy over the one half. If I go in and start readjusting my my surfaces, for example, here from this view, this is a little bit too flat. So those edges I select here right now, I would like to pull in a little bit. You can see that this is being copied to the other side. So technically speaking, I still only have one half of my object. And maybe here, this edge, I move down a little bit. Rotate. And I have to do again a little bit of adjustment to maybe fit my my profile curve. And you see right now instead of just selecting the points, I'm just in edge mode. That works pretty well as well. Are we on time? We're already at forty minutes. Um, I think we're I think we're doing good. People are we're just getting the question an, the questions asked while we're going along. So um, wow, we're basically we basically got that main shape done, right, Klaus? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot more you can do, and the the files you got. Also, for example, in body design, you have different steps I modeled. So don't freak out in case your thing looks different or um, you feel like that you're missing a step. Um, right. Yeah, I think the we would, we just we're gonna do I think two more steps, right? Just showing how to thicken it and then um, yeah. just how to trim. So, yeah, yeah, sounds good. So if you, there are all the different steps. And then there's one thing we need to to keep in mind with the symmetry. That oh, okay. Probably because we fuse it together. One of the main reasons why I started modeling my object right along the y axis, if you just creating a small object here. And if I turn on the symmetry, you see that there's a big gap in between, so it uses the world axis. So if you want to move the object to the left or the right, you see that it actually changes the geometry, it doesn't move the object, and that's because the symmetry is still on, but the when you feel satisfied with the model, you can simply turn off the symmetry and that then the geometry. 
So if I go in and then modify the site, it only modifies that particular edge. It doesn't copy it over to the other side. But now you're also free to move this part around. So in case you get slightly confused. <coughs> One of the nice aspects about working with T-splines this way, particularly in this case, it is a watertight surface, kind of like a solid, very organic. If you want to make a surface offset with nerve surfaces in Rhino, it's going to be possible, but it's probably going to take you a lot of work in fine-tuning. If I would like to create a production model, including the material thickness, I can actually make use of T-splines uh, thicken tool, which is similar like the surface offset, but because here I only have one T-spline mesh, when I do an offset, I also get just one T-spline match, which perfectly matches curvature-wise expanded or shrinked the former object I selected. So I just go ahead and click on Thicken. And then you get a small interactive preview if you want to do with your mouse about how to, to grow or to shrink. Of course, very drastic values are or it can lead to self-intersecting geometry. So I go here into a side view and zoom out a little bit and let's see. Something like this. I make it a little bit bigger so the, the difference will be easier to see. And there you see now here I have my, my bigger mesh and inside I have my smaller mesh. And it's a perfect offset just inside the volume. Yeah, actually just, just to clarify how that how that um, thicken command works is that it the the nice thing about the thicken command if you maybe maybe you'd like to turn on a clipping plane um, after you get that thickness done class so we can see mm -hmm. how that actually looks in there but what the thicken command will do is it will yeah if you have one t spline surface it will give you one offset and so the nice thing is is it, it will be a watertight um, offset and you can it's still a t-spline so you can edit it um, you can enter in the type in the distance so like two or three units um, the one the one thing to be aware of though is that it, what it's doing is it's offsetting each control point that distance and that's a little bit different than offsetting every point on the surface um, and so when Klaus puts this clipping plane on let's see uh, you probably want to apply it against the perspective viewport Klaus um, so maybe add it, add it maybe in the right viewport, but have it click so it applies in the perspective. Um, then where there's a lot, where there's more control points, then it will be. Uh, yes, yeah, so a click perspective first. There you go. Where there's more control points, it will be a, a more accurate um, offset, but it, it's not. Um, it's not a guarant guaranteed consistency the same way. So yeah, as, as he kind of pounds around, you'll be able to see that. So what we found from a lot of our users is that this is just fine for their purposes, but it may or may not be for yours. So. And then maybe you could turn on the control points and you can still move either one of those uh, surfaces. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want me to move it around? Um, yeah, just maybe one of the control points or something just to show that you can still um, move. Maybe instead of the whole object, just turn on the control points to, to show that you can still move either 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 part of the um, 
either the inside or the outside surface. So if you wanted to have some oh. variable I uh, see. radiance I there. I just submitted every oops. I'm sorry. I deactivated my clipping thing. Okay. I I'm completely getting you off off script, Klaus. I apologize for that. But I, I I think this is I think I think you've probably shown enough as far as um I guess that's the one I wanted to make there. There. So here and you can see that it's a different surface. Yeah, and it's kind of funky with that clipping plane displaying the manipulator. But <laughs> okay. So at this point. Well, we could progress to the thickening, or does anybody have a question to the uh, to the trimming? Does anybody have a question like for the thickening tool? I think they've been coming in. I think we've probably talked to most of them. Okay, so I should go ahead. Then to yep. the trim. Okay. Okay, well, I some of the buttons, depending on how you model it, might or might not fit. So I here actually have to, oops, move those a little bit more to there so you can see it better. And this one is sitting there. Okay, good. So and as as Matt said, the you're not stuck with a T-spline object. Once you're done sculpting your your product, think about it. Basically, with T-spline, you work with um, a clay-like digital material. We can then convert it to uh, to NURBS. We want to, yeah, for example, in this case, split the two shells apart. And I'm just creating another layer here. Call this one inner shell. And actually this one I call outer shell. So it will be a little bit easier to see the different parts I'm working on. Okay. As shown before, if you want to convert your T-spline to Rhino NURBS or Polysurface, you can right-click onto this icon. But also when you use the, the split tool or the trim tool and then click on that, that T-spline object, it automatically converts it for you as well. But just to make it a little bit easier, just convert it by hand. And then the pulley surface I would like to split. And I select my cutting surface. Now you have my upper shell and my lower shell. And also this was actually uh, a T-spline surface with which I did the splitting. This one is converted. Okay, so here I do the same split you through this. See, this way I didn't use the convert button to show you that Rhino and T-spline are working together fine. And 
And basically, now if you want to have the opening here, we could just continue having this serve, no, this one and this one. Um, hold on, shoot, where's my... I'm missing my toolbar for... Um, Hiding and showing some parts. Give me one second. I have to turn it on again. And just one note: Kloss has um, already saved out a bunch of layers with the T-spline. But before you do go in and, and trim the T-spline, that really is kind of a one-way street that you get on. Once once it's trimmed and you're you're finishing it up. Um, you can't convert that back to a T-spline as long as it's a... If the NURBS was not trimmed, you can convert that to a T-spline, but if it's trimmed, you will lose the trimming oh, yeah. information. So you also want to make sure that you, you save a copy of the T-spline on your layers, which Klaus has already done in this instance, but that way you can go back to the T-spline, edit it, and then retrim it. Yeah, that's... If, that is also why in the one, the, one of the files you have actually layers named T-spline and NURBS. I, I would always advise before you convert it to copy your T-spline object on a separate layer so in case you have to go back. Um, you don't have to start from scratch. You could just continue where you stopped with your T-spline object before you converted it to NURBS. So here I'm now cutting in this hole. And that's the T-spline object I used. Maybe doing the same here. And then, well, based on how you want to work, we can Duplicate maybe the edges and lock those together. And then maybe those two, we can join them. Maybe do um, a fillet on the upper edge. way to be value has to be a lot lower. So we're coming up towards the we're coming up towards the end of this. I'm curious how many of you have actually been able to um, have actually been following along and been able to um, keep up with Klaus and make this model. With the go to webinar setup, you you can type in the chat window and you can also just raise your hand. Um, if you if you have been able to follow along, if you just want to raise your hand or even type something to us. Um, or if you haven't been able to as well, and you'd like to type something to us and let us know, um, that that's really valuable feedback for doing these going ahead. Um, and then also, um, as you when you eventually leave the webinar, leave the webinar, then we'll have a pop-up survey pop-up that will ask you about your experience. And if you could fill that out, then we'd appreciate that as well as we continue to improve these. And then, of course, you can continue the trimming and filling in the faces between the shells um, exactly the same way as I did it for the control line.
Matt, how are we how are we on time? We're coming right up against the hour, so I think this has been paced about perfectly. Was there that's a, that's about what we'd wanted to show, isn't it, Klaus? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it was already an hour. It goes quick. Yep. Well, the one thing I have to to say, what is really the nice part about the tease plan is if we if you go back to unfortunately I don't have the model because I converted it, but. The nice part is simply you could just really push and pull and through the control points as the proportions you can also select a face and extrude out of it and model sharp corners or soft corners which is all yeah not really that easy or possible with straight nerves tools it gives you a complete different modeling ability for organic surfaces and you can see even something um, like this which is quite organic. It's not really a big time eater if you need to quickly model it and conceptualize it because you can quickly pump out different variations by just push and pulling your control points. Okay. Well, Klaus, thank you so much for doing this webinar with us today. Um, I think it's been really helpful to have it paced this way so that um, so that it's possible to work alongside you. Um, mm -hmm. We'll just stay around for a few more minutes if anyone has any questions. This webinar will be posted um, online in a couple of days, so you can come back and watch the video if there were some parts that you lost. But um, but uh, thanks everyone for attending. Does anybody have a question left, Matt? Um, let's see. There's been a bunch of questions coming in. We've typed back most of the answers. Um, maybe, cause if you could just show how to access the T-spines command help. Um, and the way to do that is if you just click on to start a T-spline command. So just enter any of the commands and then hit the F1 key. then that will pop up the, the T-splines help. Let's see, just one question to the, ask if you could just do a really quick overview um, of what you, uh, the kind of the process that you went through. Um, I don't know if you can, um, can break that down just a couple minutes, Klaus, but um, I think you only, you only used about, about four or five commands, I think, so could you just kind of step through a review quickly of what you did? Um... Maybe that's not so easy to do with the model yeah, to see that it's no, in. No, 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 I can. Thanks for having all these other steps in the file. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I had quit already. Okay, so to to start modeling an object like here I have very basic flat yeah, profile to start doing something like this. You can simply use the append face command. And I also try to have my background image lit up with one of the axes because I'm later going to use the symmetry. So I also turn on the snap for my world. And then you can make 
four clicks to create one face and then you only need three additional clicks for each additional following face. So I start one edge, click, click, and then I stop, right click, 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 and this way I'm just creating that this mesh. And then instead of using you move, rotate, etc., you can turn on the translate or the, the heads up display inside T splines. And then it gives you here an option for the, the manipulators like translate, rotate, or scale. And if you have an object, now I can move the whole object. Or in mode, I can select vertices. And then through push and pull, I'm just adjusting the geometry to get somewhat close to how it should be. So with this, I basically start my, my first step. Then the next step is giving this mesh some sort of depth. So I can go to, for example, the edge selection and select only my outer edge. I do not select any edges in between because this edge I will use later for my symmetry. And in the side view, I could now use the extrude edge command. And if I click on it and then move my red arrow, I'm just moving this edge away. It's actually, if you do the extrude, it's really imperative that you also make sure you really move that edge and not click, for example, somewhere else. Let me show you what happens. If I just click right now, this edge basically is gone now. And um, sometimes if you're new to the software, you might think you didn't really extrude it and you click again, extrude, and then maybe move it. But you already have one yeah, loop cut there. So you might by accident make your mesh a little bit denser than you want. And then, for example, from the side view, I go back to vertices and then start pressing right now the hotkeys W for translate and E for rotate and trying to adjust my control points and the, their position. Touching up this a little bit more. Maybe move this in a little bit. And then you see I have half of the model already built with the center part being slightly arced. There are actually no, not that many commands with polygon modeling. It's actually more an understanding of how to combine those few commands to effectively build actually what you're looking for. And then in this stage here, I could double click maybe this edge and then click extrude again. 
and and move those a little bit to here. And now I have to adjust my points, of course, in the proportion. And again, for example, here, trying to make sure that my topology or my edge flow is nice and even and I don't have strong deformations. So nice lines. The wire mesh you see should be nice and even. And then I did one additional extrude. To get to this, to that edge down here. Okay, and then so far it looks like something like this. And I was talking before trying when you work with symmetry to line up your object nicely along the axis and having the snap turned on when you do your first layout of your basic geometry. Because right now I would like to close the inner space, so I'm just selecting all the edges besides the last and the first edge and then click extrude again and I'm just moving a little bit to the left and I would like to straighten out all those points so they're vertically in one line and I can use the set points command for that since this is the y-axis, I'm using the y-axis. And you see now that they're all in one nice line. And in addition to just lining those up, if I have my snap turned on, so you can see I can snap to the grid. Or I can also snap to the geometry. And there are now two possible ways how we could close this gap right now. In my mesh here, I have a triangle. I could use Oh, uh, why is everything selected? Okay, good. I could select those two edges. Or oh, it doesn't do that. Matt? Yep. Oh, you can't actually close a triangular space? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, probably what I would do is, um, probably the best thing is just to weld. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, that was the second thing I wanted to show them. Yeah, you so. you can use the bridge command, but you need to uh, so do the selection a little bit differently. So yeah, well, well, is probably the best. So I can select the first and then my target point, and then click on weld, and then just those together. You also see, for example, right now here the edge looks a little bit sharp, and if you weld 
those parts together, then your whole geometry gets nice and smooth again. Klaus, do you want to undo that last weld? <clears throat> we can just take a look at how bridge might work there. Okay. So if you um, just enter the bridge command and select, uh, so go selection mode f edges, click up in the options on the top, then select one edge and hit enter, and then the second edge and hit enter. Oh, I see. And then that way, otherwise it's not sure, like, since, it, since they're connected, it's not sure if it's, if you're welding it to something else or just the same thing. I see. Okay. Okay. And then at this point, what we used is before I continue shaping my or continue shaping my model, uh, we are using the symmetry. along the y-axis. Sorry, I just clicked too fast. So here, click on y-symmetry. It, it goes along the y-axis. Have weld turn on, so it fuses the other part together. And now it's the symmetry turned on, I can, for example, start sculpting my object a little bit more and you see that what I do on the left side is being transferred to the right side. So it's not like a plain copy geometry like in Rhino, it actually nicely um, makes it dynamic. And maybe widen those a little bit. This part I could move down a little bit to there. And if I would like to have a much sharper edge along here, I can use the um, insert edge command. To do that, you can either select a complete row of points, or you simply double-click on an edge like here, and then you see it selects a complete loop. And this basically then tells T-spline along which direction you would like to insert a new edge loop. And I'm just click on insert edge. Okay, I have to turn off my snap. And then you see this blue line that is going this is showing you where for example it should be inserted. And you can also see that it fully goes around the whole object. And then when I click, you see that that edge then got tighter. So similar like with drawing a curve based on how far or how close points are together, the softer or the sharper the curve will be. So here with T-splines, you don't really have a fill a tool. You just build the whole mesh and just sculpt your um, your round edges or your your fillets. And. Now this model looks a little bit rough, it's a little bit rushed. At this point, for example, we can turn off the symmetry. Let's call this model to be final. And with the symmetry removed, you see that 
what I do on one side, it doesn't copy it to the other side, so it's a full watertight mesh right now, everything is closed. And if I would like to add a thickness to this model, I can use the thicken command in T-splines. The nice part about this is as long as your mesh is not too complicated, like in this case, the thickening command gives you quickly an offset of your surface. And because T the T-spine object is just one mesh, you end up with another just one mesh which fits pretty well. So you don't have the issue like with NURBS if you have a pulley surface and you do a surface offset that the, the edges don't meet each other and you have to readjust those. The command is pretty easy to use. You can just select your, your object and then go to thicken. And then you, you have a movement up and down. Down is expanding, up is shrinking. And it gives you a small wire mesh preview of how the, the result would look like. And I'm going to insert it a little bit. And there, for example, is my surface offset of that T-spline mesh to make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to add a clipping plane. So there you see that it follows the curvature pretty good. Okay, Klaus, I think that we'll go ahead and, and leave it at that. That's basically the, the T-spline's modeling part, and then um, trimming the, the T-spline, it just involves converting it to NURBS and, and yep. using the standard Rhino trimming commands. So, um, I'm just looking to see if there's any other final questions that come in before we sign off. How about smoothing? When I move edges into my surface become holes. I, I'm not quite sure what that what that's saying, but um, but the nice thing about the T spine is that when you you I mean the T spine is a smooth surface and so you can go back and forth between the viewing the T-spine as a smooth surface in the, in the box mode to kind of see the, yeah, like, yeah. the, the topology better. But With this command here, smooth total. And also in case, like here, if it looks transparent, it's just only the normals are flipped. Or not. There you go. Um, okay. Well, Klaus, thank you very much for taking the time to do the webinar today. I uh, really appreciate that. Glad you were able to make it back to the States from Europe before all that snow came in. <laughs> oh, yes. That's very true. And we'll, uh, we'll get a video of this sent out uh, in, the, in the next couple of days. Okay. Great. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Okay. All right. Happy holidays, everyone.